Hello everyone, this is Dominika and welcome to our new episode of the Expat Career and Lifestyle podcast. And uh, today I am coming to you with a fantastic guest, Vangile Makwakwa. She is an author, speaker, world traveler, founder of Wealthy Money, wealth coach, yogi and podcast host called Money Magic Podcast and Property Magician Podcast. She has been traveling for about 15 years and have lived in 12 different countries and visited way more. So welcome, welcome, Vangile. I am really happy and excited to, uh, to have you here. Uh, and uh, today we are going to speak about how to scale and grow your business while traveling the world. So excellent, excellent topic. Oh, thank you so much, Dominica. Thank you for having me on the show. I deeply appreciate it. I am really excited. So thank you and welcome. And yeah, thank you for accepting the, the invitation. So could you please tell us more, uh, a little bit about you and uh, what are you, are you doing exactly? Yeah, so I'm a money trauma coach, which means that I help uh, people, mainly women of color, heal ancestral money trauma. But as you've mentioned, I'm also traveling. I, I've been building my business as I travel. I am currently in Costa Rica and um, at a place called the Brown Girl Yoga Sanctuary. Um, that's where I'm recording this right now. So yeah, this is quite um, beautiful to be out here. So mainly a traveler and I do my work around money and trauma. And I also run two podcasts, the Money Magic Podcast and the Property Magicians Podcast. I'm also the founder of, uh, I'm also the co-founder because there's two of us, also the co-founder of a property investment fund, which is called the Property Magician Stockfile. Fantastic. Yeah. So a lot of, yeah, a lot of projects that you are involved, uh, involved with. So uh, you have been traveling for about um, 15 years right now. So, yeah. yeah. So how this international, um, let's say international journey started, like what prompted you to become um, a traveler and also run your business uh, while traveling? Mm, what prompted me to run my business was um, my experience with uh, panic attacks around money. So I studied finance. I have a University of Cape Town undergrad degree in finance. And then I did my MBA at the Simmons School of Management. But as soon as I graduated with my MBA, I started having panic attacks around money, right? And so I got so depressed it was really difficult for me to get out of bed and do much of anything really but that entire experience then led me to explore trauma in terms of money and what does that look like to us and intergenerational trauma trauma that is passed down from one generation to the next because I realized that I was replaying my family's behavioral patterns around money you know and like especially on my mom's side a lot of the people are very educated they have university degrees all this but really really struggle to uh, manage money and hold on to money intellectually they understood what to do with money just like most of us intellectually understand that we need to save and invest and all that we know all the most of us know the terminologies we know that we need to spend less than we make all that stuff, but we can't do that. So instead of forcing myself, like I had in the past to be disciplined and to follow all that, I decided to really look into what is it that stops us as human beings from taking action and from really, really doing the work that we want to do, right? Around money and really, really um, moving forward financially. So that's how I started to do this work. I then decided I was also $60,000 in debt because I'd been traveling, but I'd been using credit cards to travel. Then I got a student loan, the American student loan system, got student loans to go do the masters. And so ended up $60,000 in debt by the time I was 28. So then I decided to move back to South Africa and my debt was in US dollars and pounds. I earned South African rands and that's how I paid off my debt. 
you know, and I did that. I paid off $60,000 in three and a half years. And after that, I just made a decision that I want to travel. But this time I want to do it with cash, without credit. So if I don't have money, like tough is, that means that I can't travel because I don't own a credit card anymore. So I made that decision to stay out of debt. And that's how I went back to traveling. But that's also what prompted me to start my business. Because before I'd be traveling using credit cards and doing jobs wherever I was in the world, like waitressing in London, cruise line here, whatever. <laughs> and then I decided I'm actually going to start my business and start teaching what I know and start coaching. But I'm going to do everything cash and I'm going to share my story as I go along. And this is how I started my business and started traveling again. So that was in 2014. So it's been, I guess, really officially, I started traveling again in 2015, but launched the business officially in 2017, because between 2015 and 2017, I was living off my savings. And I also went to go, um, I also went to uh, South Korea to teach English. So before that was my decision after I paid off debt was in 2015, it was at the end of 2014. So then in 2017, I really went for this full-time entrepreneurship thing. And it was really scary, entrepreneurship and traveling. <laughs> yeah. So what was like the biggest, um, uh, your your biggest obstacle or like the biggest challenge that you uh, had to like overcome while traveling and running your business? Wow. So my biggest obstacle that I had to overcome was traveling and running my business was that I was extremely, um, I think I was extremely scared because I didn't know if I could create a consistent stream of income just as me, because remember, I'd been using credit cards before and I'd be getting jobs in different countries. So it wouldn't be your formal jobs, but I'd be doing informal work along the way. And now I was deciding I don't want to do that. And the business was taking up so much time. So I actually didn't even have energy to do that, right? Mm -hmm. I felt like for me to show up for my clients, I have to be in a different headspace. I can't be going off to waitress or work on a farm or do something and also be showing up. I had to be in a different headspace and just mentally, I wanted, I wanted to be in a different headspace. Not that I had to be, I just wanted to be, to spend my days relaxing, preparing for clients, really, really focusing my attention on doing Ho'oponopono oh, for clients, all that stuff. So it was just, um, it was a different journey for me altogether. And that for me was a big, big thing. So that was one of the biggest challenges was having to make that mental shift for one. And also then trusting myself that I could build this business and create a consistent stream of income and actually not quit <laughs> when the going mm. gets hard. It's a very, very big thing for me. But like, um, because I spent so many, so much of my teen years and then my early 20s, I'd really, really struggled a lot with depression. And one of my things was that like, I didn't know if I had the staying power to do hard things, especially when business doesn't go according to plan, when you meet challenges. So that was my biggest, um, I guess for me, that was the biggest challenge was mm -hmm. overcoming my own view of myself and my own inner doubts, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah so like how did you overcome it like what strategies like did you <sighs> did you use like one strategy that, that helped you <laughs> yeah I know I'm happy to share the strategies um so the first thing I did was I started working um I did two things I I have a very in everything that I do, I do the practical approach, like what is the actual work that needs to be done in the physical realm. Then I do the, a lot of the inner work and trauma work, mindset work, all that. So those are the two strategies that I employed. So the first thing that I did 
was I hired a trauma coach, right, to work with me. And I started developing my own body of work around my fears, really to address my fears around trauma. And ironically, that body of work now forms the core of the work that I teach because I realized that as humans, we tend to have similar fears, maybe, and but for different reasons, myriad of different reasons. So I try to address all those different reasons with clients. <clears throat> and so that was one of the first things that I did was really do the inner work on myself. A lot of my fears around not being good enough, a lot of my fears around being visible, around being seen, a lot of my fears around being rejected. These are things that I still openly talk about that I battle with, you know, mm -hmm. I still deeply battle with because I just feel like it's not something that most people openly talk about, which is that even if you are out there and you're seen and you're doing things like I've been doing, I've done TV interviews, I've done, mm. my books have uh, gotten lots of recognition, all sorts of things. But I think like within me, there's still that fear and some of those fears will surface. So, but I've worked through what I can truly say, I've worked through 90% of the core stuff that would get me into freeze mode. And I started doing a lot of nervous system work. You know, I started working a lot with my body and going into the nervous system and really, really feeling into my body. So that was the first thing. And then the other practical thing that I did was to really, really focus on um, building systems in my business and hiring people. So I always say like, I built a business that is foolproof of me, you know, because <laughs> the truth is when you travel, sometimes for me anyway, as a traveler, I can get lost in countries for like a month or two before I surface. Like I just can go, like I'll find new scenes. And then next thing you know, I'm just there all the time. I'm exploring, taking photos, writing about this entire scene. And I just kind of get caught up in that. So what I had to do was build a business that would be foolproof of me, foolproof of my experiences. So the business can continue to run even when it is challenging for me to show up. And that meant putting systems in place, that meant automating, that meant hiring an incredible team to support me and help me. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, so it's like overcoming those fears, yeah, working on your uh, trauma, yeah, because often we think that what we see on picture, like the, all coaches or online entrepreneurs, like visible and enjoying this life, giving interviews, mm -hmm. that yeah, we are like confident and we are fearless, but, yeah. Yeah, but it's not, yeah, it's not always, yeah, it's not always the case and putting uh, systems and automations in your business, it's, 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 it's the part of uh, our work. Um, but what like about scaling, scaling and growing your business, moving your business to the next level, maybe pivoting or changing something? So what are like, what is your experience exactly and mm. how to do it? Yeah, so that was also one of my most challenging things, like going from a business that made 2,500 US dollars a month to scaling my business so that I could make six figures. Um, this was in 2018. So it, and it just kind of shifted so radically that for years, I couldn't move beyond that, you know, like I couldn't, well, for a year in 2017, the whole of 2017, I was stuck at $2,500 a month. And I didn't know how to go beyond that, you know, into how do I make this business mm -hmm. Uh, make at least $8,000 to $10,000 a month, right? And one of the things that I had to work on was exactly this. So I had to pivot my systems in a whole different way, right? Um, 
I think before it was just like I had things down pat to a schedule, right? Like I'd say, I'll send this out, I'll do this. So I had to start automating even in my sales process. I had to figure out how do I automate sales so that sales can happen even when I'm not constantly selling. Because if you look at my social media, I'm often not constantly selling on social media, mainly because I'm constantly everywhere and I'm trying to change that now. So we'll talk about like the next level of what I, how I'm now building the business to Mm -hmm. basically be foolproof of me so that it can start to scale Uh, so um, yeah so the next thing was to just start to automate even in the sales process so that things can happen so that I'm selling even when I am not openly selling on social media and that also meant implementing Facebook advertising at a new level and now I'm actually working on implementing advertising even more you know, really, really uh, scaling my advertising model and growing it. So that was the first thing. And then the the advertising was the second thing. And then the third thing around um, scaling was going from just having one, uh, my assistant. So actually before then, I used to just have an assistant once or twice, and then I do everything myself, right? So now then I had to bring an assistant on board more for longer periods in the business. So not full time, but at least uh, for about 10 to 20 hours a week. Um, So and then they helped me with almost everything. And then having a social media manager, I sat down and had my branding, had a branding meeting with my brand manager, who at the time was also my social media manager. And we sat down and we discussed everything that I needed in my business. So that was really, really powerful, I found. So those are some of the things that I ended up doing in the business in order to scale. It was one of the, it was very, very challenging and very scary because firstly, you're going from just having one person a few hours a week to having like maybe two or three consistent team members, even if they're not full time, but you're having them on your team. And as I've scaled, I've now also brought on, I've stopped doing um, one-on-one coaching. I now do coaching. If people want to coach with me one-on-one, they now need to fly to the country where I'm at and they do an intensive with me for seven days. Mm -hmm. I mean, for very obvious reasons, because if I'm traveling, it's no longer as simple to uh, fit people into my schedule every single week, right? So what I've done instead is I then trained one of my clients. Uh, She needed a job and she was a client onboarding. Then I brought her on as a client onboarding specialist. Then I noticed that she, the way she was working with clients was very much in a coaching manner. So then I started training her as a coach and she now does individual coaching under the business. So I have an individual coach within my business, you know, and then I do group coaching within the mastermind, which is really, really um, interesting. And I think really, really powerful for the business. So That's also a new business model that has come up. But what I'm now doing as I'm scaling is trying to figure out how do I best utilize my time? And I think the best way to utilize my time is really to do more, to work more on the business instead of in the business. So trying to free my time so that I do group coaching, I do this VIP in-person intensive. And then I also just focus on the online courses and marketing. So Right now, the pivoting is around that. And that means that I've also, I'm starting to switch also how I invest in the business. I'm investing more in marketing in the business than ever before. And I'm also investing in bringing in marketing consultants and marketing people to help me in the business. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's very, yeah, very interesting. And also very interesting to hear that you are like, uh, thinking about not being so visible on on social media, but more about like advertising and, and, and marketing, but like going 
uh, not being so visible on social media. Is it really possible like not to use social oh, media? Oh, no, I want to mm -hmm. be visible on social mm -hmm. media. This is exactly why I've hired my marketing people, mm -hmm. right? Sorry, is this that I haven't, part of why I'm hiring the marketing consultants mm -hmm. and the branding people to be part of my team, the consultants, mm -hmm. they coming on for six months. Um, is because I need that kind of uh, guidance in terms of being held accountable to be more visible, to show mm, up more, okay. to sell more on social yeah. media. I think what I've done is I've done a really great job of automating sales mm -hmm. in the back end in terms of like my mailing list, using ConvertKit and all that. But what I haven't, what so that's, and then I'm using a lot of uh, Facebook advertising, mm -hmm. right? But what I haven't done more of that I feel like I'm very visible. I share a lot on social media, right? But what I haven't done is use social media more consciously, yeah. not mm -hmm. to just share, but to say, hey, this is what I want. This is what I'm selling. And to do that on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I think that if I committed to that every other day or even every day for like three or six months, it would make the biggest difference in my yeah. business. So that's what I'm working on and heading towards in the business. Yeah. So like changing the strategy, let's let's say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just mm -hmm. dialing, up, dialing it up a notch. So yeah. I won't change the way that I post. I will just add other things mm -hmm. around my postings on social media. Yeah. Yeah. So another question that I have, uh, because you, so when it's like the right time or how can you understand that it's the right time to scale scale your business or move to the next level because you said that you were earning um such amount of money but you wanted yeah to go to a, a six figure but how to understand exactly if your business is ready uh, to to grow and to scale Oh, that's a good question. I think maybe for everyone it's different. The way that I do this is I work on how I feel. The minute I start feeling constricted and frustrated with how much I'm making and just challenged by it, and I feel like my business expenses are starting to literally get to break even with the revenue, mm -hmm. then I know that it is time to scale because obviously for the business to continue growing, the revenue has to outpace expenses. But if my revenue is way is less than my expenses, then I have a problem with my business, right? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like more about, yeah, more about uh, your feelings. Yeah. It can be different for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, it can be different for everyone. But the other thing that I've also done now is I've also, before I scale, and I notice I do this very intuitively without thinking about it, I put systems in place to allow for that scaling. So like I've had meetings with my team, we've already started to figure out how do we change things in the back end? How do we change certain things so that, this, uh, so that scaling can happen? And I don't have to worry about, oh, wow, we're growing too fast and how do I service clients, right? So there's a lot of things that like we've already put into place in preparation for that in terms of the practical business stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And what to do, for example, if you know that it's the right time to scale your business and uh, move it to the next level um, you are traveling and you are enjoying your life, but um maybe you are scared uh, about uh, scaling it or maybe you have some uh, limiting thoughts or uh, doubts about that and you can be stuck for for uh, for some time so how to like unstuck and go yeah oh that's such a good question so one of the first things i like to do is really feel into my body right mm -hmm. like one of my favorite modalities is eft tapping and breath work and then i do a lot of work around um, my own body of work around working what i call spirit of money meditations and ancestral work where like i go in and i talk to my ancestors and i Literally, I guide people on this as well, where I ask them about what are their natural gifts around healing or what are their natural gifts around business, right? Because everyone has natural gifts that you're not even aware of. So I talk to people about one of the things that I realized when I did this was that one of my natural 
gifts that comes naturally to me is operation systems and strategy, right? That if I can focus on that, that's just normal within the ancestral lineage, right? And within that lineage, then I can lean on those gifts, right? So that has been one of my biggest aha moments. So then what I do is I work on that and I work with my ancestors on that. So to see, okay, what is the next path for me? But then when I'm also feeling super, super stuck, I then work on my spirit of money work, which is actually the body of work that I'm doing now, where, where, which is a body of work really that I developed where you get to meet the various ancestral and self money archetypes, your own money archetypes, your ancestral money archetypes. And you get to have these conversations and integrations of these archetypes and you start to understand what are some of your greatest fears around getting unstuck and allowing more and receiving and dealing with more money so that once you know that then you can take the practical actions to say let's say that you're a marketing person and you come up with an answer and you find that your ancestral gifts are around marketing you can merge that answer to market in a particular way that makes you feel safe or able to handle that growth or if you're a systems person an operations person then you will figure out how do you market in such a way uh, how do you grow the business in such a way that what is coming up in these meditations is something that you can then employ systemically and operationally to basically make yourself feel safe enough to receive more and to expand. Um, I hope that's making sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. It makes sense a lot. Yeah, it's, it's important, like, to understand. Um, yeah, what are your gifts exactly? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and this will help you, like, to yeah. be more confident. Yeah, about change and growing your growing your business. Yeah. So yeah gonna... so with oh, sorry continue. no no go on go on no so i was gonna say yes once you know that then you can lean into that natural wisdom right as you work through the trauma around money because then the other thing is that once we do the spirit of money work which is a work that i teach like i said is then one of the things that could also come up is that you have a better understanding of where your money archetype comes from and then some things may come up around past lives or vows you've made or something, then you can actually go deeper into a specific, into other specific bodies of work. So this is how I work on myself is that I then go from the spirit of money work and then I then work and see, oh, this seems like, oh, this seems like this is an issue with my receiving set point. Then maybe I can work on my receiving set point and my nervous system, right? And that means that something, then I can start working on shifting that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic, wonderful. So thank you very much for sharing all your experience and being so open about, uh, about how you run your business, your, your challenges and um, the strategies that you are using to, to grow it and scale it. So if someone wants to connect with you, how they connect with you uh, and also what are your projects? Oh, yes. So um, one of the easiest ways to connect with me is to find me on Instagram at Vangile Makwakwa. So my full name and surname. Feel free to shoot me a direct message. People usually do after podcasts. Uh, let me know where you've heard me and uh, I'll be happy to connect. And then I also have a free seven day tapping into ancestral money wisdom training. So if you've been listening to this and you're like, I really, really love it. You can check it out at wealthy-money.com forward slash training. Again, wealthy-money.com forward slash training. On Facebook, look for the Facebook page called Wealthy Money. And you'll be able to connect with me there as well. On LinkedIn and Twitter, I'm also under Vangile Makwakwa. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. So I will put the links um, with the show notes so uh, people can go and check it. Uh, any last piece of advice about um, traveling and uh, traveling with your business, growing it or scaling it? Yeah. Oh my gosh. One of the things that I want to say is that don't rely on self-discipline when you're traveling because Traveling by its very nature is extremely, um, I guess, I want to say chaotic, but I feel that's very strong a word, but it can be very disruptive is a better word, right? So when you are building your business, you want to 
build your business that takes into account the fact that you're going to miss flights. <laughs> you are going to, there'll be certain things that don't go according to plan. You won't, uh, sometimes you won't know that like this particular country has this requirement right now with, with COVID restrictions or whatever. So really, really build uh, systems into your business, build a team. Don't, don't just think that you are going to be a one-man show. It really, really makes a difference when you have support in your business. I always say to people, I prefer support over self-discipline because self-discipline means that I have to whip myself into shape right like I need to wake up and be extremely disciplined and show up and be on point all the time and I'm human I have mood swings I get period pains I you know I get like really moody I arrive in a country I don't have hot water which has happened a lot actually in Costa Rica I get upset I have to deal with that like I have to figure out like plumbing issues suddenly that I didn't have all that stuff and if you are building a business then don't like have a support have support in place especially if you're traveling it's going to make so much easy easier for you and it's going to make it a lot easier for you to grow and scale have the support in terms of the emotional mindset or trauma coaches have the support in terms of your team in your business to help you do the practical stuff trust me it makes a big big difference to have both types of support i'm not a believer in either or i believe that both these types of support are important Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah, I like this. I prefer uh, support <laughs> over self-discipline. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this will be my mantra now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy. I'm glad. Honestly, it has saved me because I don't know if I'm particularly self-disciplined, but so many people are like, you've got so much self-discipline, you've got so much self-discipline. And I'm like, I actually have a lot of support. So it's easy to be quote unquote disciplined when you have so much support. It's it's a lot easier to get things done when you, to do very hard and difficult and scary things when you've got people supporting you because you know that even if it all falls apart publicly whatever you have like a team you've got coaches you've got the support you've got your relationships to fall back on it makes a huge huge difference uh, a huge huge difference and I feel like it also in many ways it also helps us to do things that are uncomfortable we always get hurt. we always get told to do one uncomfortable thing a day but I think if your nervous system is already overwhelmed and your nervous system is already feeling completely dysregulated to do the uncomfortable things just overwhelms and dysregulates your nervous system even further but when you have that support and you know that you've got a team around you you have people that are helping you take a mountain make a mountain into a small molehill it's easy to progress and I think for me I have the tendency to look at molehills and see huge mountains I see Kilimanjaro I see the Himalayas and just having like people that help me break it down and help me see that this is a molehill and this will you will be able to get through this it's so so powerful Mm -hmm. Fantastic, fantastic, wonderful, Angela. Thank you very much for, for sharing that. Uh, thank you very much for listening or watching if you are watching the video version. So uh, please tell us what are your learning points uh, from this interview, your insights, uh, or maybe uh, questions, additional questions about how to scale and grow your business while uh, traveling. Uh, post them in the comments. Uh, and uh, I will be back soon with another episode episode of the expat career and lifestyle podcast thank you very much Mangila, and safe travels <laughs> thank you dominica <laughs> you're welcome